That's an abrupt intro. Hello. Is it abrupt? It was 30 seconds. That seems pretty lengthy. I guess it didn't fade or anything. Yeah, that's true. It just kind of cuts, cuts on your face. Uh, hello, for people that are watching. Uh, I'm Zach, and this is Dylan in the Tiny Box. And we are some nobodies. And this is a special, weird, new version of Talking Upstream that we're calling Twitching Upstream. Uh, usually what we do is Dylan and I, we kind of sit down with a big whiteboard and we do whatever we do. We just talk and make up stories and then kind of have a guest and people chat with us and help us create stuff. Um, but because of current situations and because of everything else, we are going to do a little mix up. And I found a flimsy old overhead projector and, uh, we're going to do it this way and see what it's like. So, uh, if you tune in anytime, feel free to chat with us, feel free to yell at us about the story, heckle us, uh, try to throw Dylan off. Please um, do. Yeah. <laughs> we also need some help doing this. Um, so yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, yeah. So we're gonna let, we're gonna let some more people kind of show up in the chat, but until we do, uh, all right, entertain this yeah. here. Cool. Hello, um, entertain this. We see you. Yeah. Uh, so while people kind of show up and we get, uh, I guess, an idea together or something, however we yeah. do it, um, I have a, a quick question for you. Jill. Sure, go for it. So, quick question. What's up? That was quick. Wow, I didn't even hear it. <laughs> yeah, you like that? That's so good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Star Wars. Uh, yeah. I know we're watching Mandalorian. We're getting that together. Uh, this week is the final episode of that. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about that? But also the tie-in to the fifteen other shows that you they know, just announced. I gotta say, I didn't expect when Star Wars got bought by Disney it would become a long-form television series that I have to pay for. But here we are in 2020, where we've let cable return with a vengeance true it's fine right, quick, yeah. quick quick question sure uh marvel good move marvel news i don't yeah. know if you saw this today but uh willem dafoe was cast in the spider-man 3 so as officially well. coming back yep he's officially coming back uh he's gonna reprise his role as the goblin and also sandman has been cast as well which is pretty interesting so yeah. they're obviously creating a sinister six out of mm -hmm. Uh, old movies, which is cool. Yeah. Uh, so my quick question is, is this going to be a good movie? I hope so, because there's a lot of hype building up, and if it doesn't deliver, then we're going to be real angry. Because um, there's, there's like 16 stars of this movie. Yeah, there's a lot of people. I really hope that... Have they cast Craven yet? No, not yet. I hope they get someone good for Craven. Yeah. I want Sasha Baron Cohen. I know that's oh. a weird choice, no, but I think choice. he's dramatic, and he mm -hmm. would definitely give it his all. Now, they're also saying that this is going to turn into a trilogy that is WandaVision as the first part of the trilogy, uh, Spider-Man, and then Doctor Strange and Multiverse of Madness is going to kind of sell mm -hmm. that mini trilogy. That sounds kind of cool. That sounds fine. Um, yeah. I'm not a huge Wanda and Vision fan beyond her ability to implement House of M, but mm -hmm. we'll see how they deliver. Yeah, right on. Uh, all right. Uh, Quick question. Go for D it. DC News. Yeah. Uh, Wonder Woman is being released the same day as it is in theaters, which is not actually happening now, uh, which is going to be this Christmas. So in 10 days from today, we're going to be able to watch uh, the new Wonder Woman 1984 on HBO Max. And then moving forward to all of 2021, everything that is a Warner Bros. property is going to go to HBO Max the same day as theaters, when theaters open. So my question to you is, will this affect directors moving forward because there's not going to have that big of a box office number to bank on if people can just watch it at home. I know Villeneuve and Nolan have both um, expressed their discontent with the plan. I think this is more likely the death of the movie theater or at least the non-production owned movie theater. I agree. And also, did you happen to notice that uh, when you logged into Netflix today, it gave you a warning that Netflix is raising its charge to $17.99 uh, a month. That's yeah. pretty crazy. Yeah, that's that's a lot. And Netflix really has to step up to deliver the content people are going to really pay for. Because yeah. right now it's like people go crazy over Stranger Things for some reason. Yeah. Um, I really like the Castlevania series. I think the animated yeah. like cartoon is very good. So I mean, I'm fine with Netflix right now. They're the first. Yeah. Uh, quick question. In sure. other news, which is not obviously Star Wars, DC, or Marvel, uh, Chris Pine was cast in the D and D movie. That yes, he was through, through Paramount Studios. Um, my question is: Is there any chance this can be a good movie? 
Any chance? Yes. <laughs> now are they now because D D is a role playing game set from someone else's point of view? Mm -hmm. Do they have to touch on that, or do you dive into a story that is already in Dungeons and Dragons? The you have some weirdness with a D D movie because you need to either choose a well known D D module or quest to follow, or you need to set it in a D D setting, or you need to do a generic customized fantasy setting and just make references to D&D &D spells and mechanics and that sort of thing. Yes. I don't think it's going to be good because I don't think that there's any sort of unifying vision to it. Yeah. yeah but we'll see. We'll see who's involved. Um, the director was someone who's done fun stuff before, I think. I actually didn't look into the director. I just saw... I don't remember. The, I saw the casting right before we kind of hopped yeah. on here. Um, all right. Well, let's hop into what we do here. Yeah. And what we do on Talking Upstream is Dylan and I will come to the table with a very weird idea uh, each. And then somehow we used to fight over it and choose one to go over. Then we decided we weren't going to do that anymore. It was putting a strain on our friendship. And we decided to have guests. Now the guests choose. That was actually yeah. kind of a cool, that was a cool screen for you to be uh, locked on. Oh, I didn't <laughs> um, see that screen was locked. That's okay. What we're going to do on here, because this is going to be a quicker format, we really want to engage with people and make sure that we can have conversations and create stories that people want to hear by having them chime in, you know, add, add part of it. That might be kind of cool. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm just going to, and if you don't know us, how we work is I wake up every day about three o'clock in the morning with a very stupid idea and I start texting Dylan randomly like a lot it, either it's a character idea a story idea um maybe it's a board game idea or uh just an idea for another podcast that we should do because we currently have about 85 mm -hmm. and uh so what we're gonna do on this show is that uh, i'm gonna randomly ask dylan to just pluck one stupid text um that i sent him and then we're gonna turn that into a story and try to figure that out and once again if you are watching anywhere feel free to chime in and help us do this. So. We're specifically doing this on Twitch because we want people to leave comments and help us do this. Cool. That'll be great. All right. Well, then if you're watching this via Twitch, chime in, help us out. Make yes. Cool. And if you're watching this via somewhere else than Twitch, I don't know how you got access to the stream, but good work. Yeah. It, it could be like our YouTube channel later. Is that, is that a thing or no? YouTube channel? Let's just go. I don't think so. Let's I just go I ahead. <laughs> anyway. I'm choosing an idea that we you have previously sent me in text form. Yeah. Okay, I had one in mind. Uh, you are asking me which ones I wanted to do, which ones kind of felt fun. You sent, I'm going to read the text. Is it cool if I read your text out loud for yeah. everybody at home? Yeah, sure. Weird idea sent Saturday, 8.54 a.m. Weird idea, cult doctor, taking the idea of phantom limb to the next level. Instead of someone feeling a limb they lost, what if someone has random surgery and then starts feeling an extra phantom? Phantom. I say, actually, cult doctor is an idea we could probably get good mileage from. And you said, adding phantom wounds onto people to try and graft to a human to bring to life. Yeah. Cool. That okay. is a, that is a, okay. So obviously how that came to me was, uh, if you don't know, I was recently had spine surgery and one of the medications that I take is for nerve damage. And the, the medication was designed for people to feel phantom limbs that had either a limb amputated or lost or whatever. And it still feels like they're there. And this kind of helps them nerve damage. So I was thinking that having phantom limb is terrible. It's gotta be terrible, you know, like to, to feel something that's not there. But I also have this weird itch, like a scratch part in my surgery spot. And I was like, oh my God, what if I started feeling like a phantom limb there? Like what if my surgeon was like this demonic doctor that like put a weird arm onto me that I couldn't see, but I was just kind of like my body was rejecting it. So obviously, that, <laughs> uh, so that was where that yeah. story kind of came from. And it, it, it is, it, it's a very weird story. And, and I don't think I've seen anything like that. So uh, the idea of like a cult doctor or a, a doctor that is trying to put on uh, demonic or phantom limbs onto people. So yeah. I, I think that, yeah, I, I think that's a, a perfect one for, for our first do it. Uh, one of these. So if, if, if you're watching on Twitch and you want to be involved with this phantom limb thing that we're about to go over, feel free. I'm uh, also give me some feedback. on. I, I know that entertainers says that they love the classic projector. I think it's cool. It was a, uh, a comedy routine that I used to do called a, a comedy over your head using an overhead projector. And I would like draw stories. <laughs> um, so if it doesn't work, we'll figure it out. No, yeah, that's fine. Okay. So cool. phantom limb. Yeah. So now 
I'm so going to minimize my. I'm going to make my window small so that we can see the projector better. Okay, cool. Uh, anyway, oh, that is blown out. That's okay. Yeah. How'd that happen? I don't know. Anyway, I do. don't worry about it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um. So when you sent me this idea, what did you have in mind beyond a doctor <laughs> grafting limbs onto people, phantom, phantomly? Uh, phanto phantomous. Uh, yeah, phantomly. I guess that's that's. Phantomous. Yeah. Oh man, I can't get that to stop. Um, That's all right. Okay. We'll figure it out. So yeah, I was assuming that it was just some sort of phantom body parts that okay. either a doctor that wants to splice human uh, DNA with uh, demonic things or uh, is just a nefarious uh, uh, whatever, whatever. Um, maybe they are growing them the way that they put human ears into mice backs. Uh, okay, I know that yeah. that's a thing. So uh, <laughs> maybe they're curating uh, extra limbs for, for phantoms. Um, what, 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 do, what do you see here? What, what so do you got? I'm seeing just trying to make, I guess I'm I'm pulling a little bit from Human Centipede, where the guy just does it to do it. Like he's just a crazy scientist, and he has a capability, so he wants to do it. I don't know exactly what the end goal for it would be, except like a guy with like arms, phantom arms. Are you thinking demonic or like making them feel phantom limbs? Well, I, I guess at first, it, a because I couldn't see them. You know that I I wouldn't know what they looked like. Yeah. I just know that they were infecting my body, and I think that I was trying to reject them. Okay, so I'm seeing an unethical mad scientist trying to create a super being, or somehow exceed human capacity by grafting demonic limbs on now are these invisible like phantom limbs or are these like straight up demon arms um i i guess probably both okay uh i don't i don't think i what what, what would you say is the difference of that uh invisible human arms versus visual demon arms no they, they you can't see them okay cool that's fine um i'm wondering about what what kind of format were you seeing this? Visual? Yeah, I guess visual. Um, I can see it as like a short, like a horror short, because yeah. there's probably not a lot of story to this yet. Um, but yeah, I, I would see it as somebody who recently had surgery and uh, their body is just rejecting something. And yeah. maybe maybe they have a friend that's a nurse and it's like, it seems like your body's going through this kind of like uh, pushing out thing. And uh I, I don't, I, I guess there was like maybe uh, an, an ex cult doctor that has to clue them in on what's happening. Uh, okay. And it's like, well, I'm telling you, it looks like a classic case of cult arm to me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, and I don't know, and maybe somebody could uh, decide how to use it for their benefit or uh, okay. to like, I've, I've become as like a symbiote, you know, like, Hey, yeah. I've, I've come to master my, my phantom limb. Uh, now I have like almost the, uh, the same thing as a prehensile tail. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure. What, what do you see? I'm seeing, so there's an old uh, tabletop game story about a guy who made a superhero in a role-playing game called Ball of Arms Man, where they took the extra limb power as many times as their character level would allow them, and they wound up having like 15 arms. They would just yeah. roll around. It feels a little goofy for what we're going for. <laughs> um, but I'm seeing like a guy who gets, I suppose, who... This is a weird one, for a little bit. We don't have a whole yeah. lot built for this. That's fine. That's what we're here no, for. So, so we're going to say I, I like the mad scientist aspect, yeah. and and let's let's go down the route of it being like I said, they're they're grafting. Um, he is somehow either coerced or manipulated to work for uh, okay. the demonic people, and they have to graft, and you know he has to. Yeah. He's the one who's like, you want me to put demon limbs on the human bodies okay so uh, he's not he's not the instigator no okay okay maybe i don't know <laughs> it it seems cool that this guy's like forced to do this yeah. um so uh yeah let's, let, maybe let's go that route for right now sure doctor is forced to graft demon arms onto recipients works for me so we need uh, let's do some character work first then we have the doctor I see three entities right now. We have the doctor, we have the people who make him do this, and we have the victim. I see that as the main opening right here. So doctor, and then we have the baddie, 
Yeah. And then uh, the victim, yeah, that's the first. That would be the first characters that we have yeah. here. Yeah. And then obviously whatever being had the the, the limbs or is giving yeah. limbs. Let's um, see. So yeah, so the doctor could just be like uh, like an ex, um, like Cos- uh, what do you if you do like, facelifts and stuff? You know, cosmetic surgery. <laughs> yeah, cosmetic surgery. Yeah. So the the doctor is one of those. He's a cosmetic surgeon because I, I feel that out of all the shows I've seen with them on it, they don't have like a soul. Uh, they seem sure. pretty pretty not great people, and they could be easily. Is it baseball victim or is it I? Tim with an E, an I, an I. Don't worry about it. Um. <laughs> So, what what is this? What is the bad guy's primary want for having someone get arms grafted to them surgically? Is it soldiers? Kind of like no, it's royalty. They want they have they're having royals. It's 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 extra limbs for demonic royals. Yeah, it's like the okay. like the wealthy. Huh. Okay. Um, <laughs> so you, you don't like that? <laughs> it, that's a strange one to me, but that's fine. Um, well, I mean, well, I, you, okay. So if you if you are in a society where you can afford to have extra limbs grown yeah. onto yeah. different species, you're in the upper echelon of that species, I would assume. People that can have like extra stuff, uh, I guess, you, or you have like uh, good insurance, maybe. <laughs> How does this work? Is this um? Uh, so uh, so if they're warriors. I was thinking, like, if they're if they're a cult, they might have like a rival cult they need to, I don't know, deal with. Mm. And the cult, like, it's like a cult battle, and the, and the cult people are losing limbs. Either they're losing limbs, or they are trying to like pump up their people's ability by giving them extra arms. Oh, that's I, not bad. How yeah. about a gla- how about a gladiator, like a demonic gladiator situation where they're grafting extra limbs to make them stronger to try to, to make to a f- champion. To fight also for money. Yeah, D- sure. Demonic coin. Yeah, that works for me. Yeah, drachmas. Wait, that's something. What? The, that's Greek currency. Um, <laughs> Sounds fake. It's old. It's old world Greek currency. They also oh, fake. Okay. Um, what kind of how how serious are we? Is this going to be like? Because this is this is a goofy baseline idea. I think. I mean, it's a doctor putting invisible limbs on the people. So yeah, um, yeah. It's probably not too. Uh, a high level. So I, I, I feel like we can go kind of goofy, like dark, maybe dark manish or like early Raimi kind of goof, like, like ham and cheese. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. So in that case, I don't think we need to worry about too much of an intense reason why this is happening. I think it should be just like, yes, well, our Colts f- football team needs extra abilities to catch or something like that, you know? Yeah. But, Oh, it's he, called sports. Either cult sports or like it would be funny if they think it's nefarious, but it actually turns out to be pretty mundane. Yeah. Um, what if like we think for a while that it's going to be a villainous motivation? Turns out it's mostly just like <laughs> Yeah. It, it's it's for the whatever the demonic version of the Harlem Globetrotters is. Yeah. And it's like you do this or we're gonna torture your family. It's like oh, I'm, I'm fine. I'll do it. I'm almost more interested in doing Cult sport rings, but we'll do that later. We'll expand that out. Um, I, do like, I do like cult sport rings. Yeah. So, um, cult sports. Does the doctor start in the cult's possession? Does he get kidnapped at the start of the story? I'm going to say that the, the, he's he is kidnapped at the start of the story. The story okay. starts with somebody getting a normal surgery. Sure. And we see and that he's the best in the field. Or he's got a he's got a lot of Yelp reviews. He's in the field. Yeah, they found him on Facebook Marketplace, and he's yeah. reasonably priced, but also five star rated on Facebook. Okay, that works. Yes. Um, so he gets kidnapped. He he does his surgery, and we see that he is effective at his job. And yeah. then he gets kidnapped by a mysterious organization. Wakes up probably in an unmarked room. Um, he wonders where he is for a little while. He is eventually the doors opened. He's blindfolded or like, you know, sacked, you know, with the head bag over the head. And he wakes up or at least 
the bag is removed in a strange operating room. Okay. And how do they get him to perform a supernatural surgery? Do they have a oh, special it, like suit of surgical tools that are active that can only that can like let you do surgery on non corporeal entities? Yeah, but also his nurses are demons too. Okay. <laughs> okay. Is the idea eventually that people will be overwhelmed by the demonic part of their limbs and become demons? Um no. I mean I guess okay. that, that is that that is a an occurrence um but i think mostly it's like they have to go back to the doctor and be like i just there's just something going on here but the incubation period is, is very short so when they would go back to like get it checked on it like i'm just gonna take this off and it's fully demonically grown so these limbs have are like demonic like remoras i don't know what that word means. It, they're the little fish that eat up that grab onto sharks yeah. It's like yeah. they feed off human energy or something and then they detach it and use it for whatever demons are used for. Yeah, but also plasma. But also plasma. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the, I mean, so is it just energy? I mean, they, uh, like, uh, like good moods? Because, like, there's also, there's going to be something physical, maybe. What if, what if it's less, what if he thinks it's the Phantom Whims initially, but they're actually, like, demonic embryos or something and they feed off their, like, violent experiences? And when they get large enough or full enough, they detach them and then go on to the next step, which is like hatching them or something. Okay, that sounds crazy. But my my as you were speaking, yeah, of an ending to this story that I was thinking was that this person, the initial person who gets the surgery, ends up being the warrior champion in the battle. Okay, the first one, the first sure. human to enter slash yeah. win this this ultimate battle. Okay, so they're they're doing an ultimate battle, or is this part of the sport cult? Well, I so I feel that the sport cult would be more of like a gladiatorial, uh, money making scheme. Okay, so it's like a like a like a gladiator fight. That this is a <laughs> lot of ideas in one in one concept. I'm just saying. Okay, well then you need to rein me in. This is how this works. Okay, okay. <laughs> Let's not do the sport thing. Oh, well, then what do are they doing? Do the sport this? thing. Well, what are they doing the limbs for? Uh, I mean, if they're if this is like a goofy gangland, like TMNT style gang, they're just robbing banks. They're straight up robbing banks. They're robbing museums, and this is like, you know how the that I think it's what is it? The foot has like weird powers, kind of. Wait, from Ninja Turtles? Am I right? The foot, the Foot Clan. Yeah. No, the hand has maybe weird powers. The hand. The hand yeah. from Daredevil instead. From Iron Fist, yeah, yeah, Daredevil, yeah. Iron Fist. Um, yeah. But they're like this weird band of magic criminals who kind of rob banks. What if this is a story of the guy who is like creating those weird like people? Like this is the story of the, of oh, the like, gang that commits so the crimes. So they're just, they're making clan members. Yeah. Oh, so they're okay. So instead of putting a limb onto a human, what they're doing is they're turning that human into a clan demonic member. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, by it could be by grafting demon parts onto them. All right, well, let's go down that way. Okay, <clears throat> so I'm seeing the first surgery as something relatively simple. Maybe a guy lost like a hand in a fight or something. Yeah, and they're like, You have to replace this hand. And it's like, What are you talking about? I, I can't repl I can't replace it. What do you have prosthetics? And then they open like a like a black wooden box or something, and there's like a clawed three fingered hand in there. Oh, cool, yeah. And it's like attach this to the stump, and he goes, "No, <laughs> I have a medical license. This is horrific. What are you talking about?" And then somehow they convince him they convince him to do it um, because maybe they're like, "Well, then he's no use to us," and then they. Like threatened to kill the guy on the table, and he's like, "Fine, fine, I'll attach a demon hand to this criminal if so long as you don't hurt anybody." And it goes well. And then they'd probably take him back to the cell. Yeah. 
I'm just kind of I'm just kind of spitballing here. They come back to the cell and he spends some more time there, and he's you know shouting about I want information. Tell me what I why am I here? And then a few days pass, and he tries to get info from the people who bring him food, and he tells them that like I don't know maybe he has like a maybe he has like a cat at home and he's trying to guilt him into letting him out. It's like hey, please I have a cat. The automatic feeder runs out of food after a week. Or so. I don't okay. know. I don't. I don't. I'm just spit, like I said. I'm just kind of rolling right here. Yeah. Um. They pull him out again. Um. This time, because <clears throat> maybe someone got seriously hurt. Maybe we have a maybe we have like a little montage of him doing minor like replacement surgeries where he's like, you know, some guy lost an eye, so they put a demon eye in his head, and then. You know, uh, he. This is a lot of work to put on one surgeon, but that's okay. Um, no, he deserves it. He'll deal it. He'll do it. Yeah. Oh, hello, Puff Puff Pass Five Thirteen. Yes, that is an overhead projector. Um, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Old school. <laughs> we're only we're only moving on up here at some nobodies. Um, yeah. Sometimes laterally. Yeah. So. <laughs> um. We see him. I think the big surgery is him like fully grafting someone's arm back, and it's like a weird, like demon arm. Yeah. And then I think he probably saves saves someone's life. Maybe like the the gang leader's kid gets in like a raid or something, and he saves him somehow. Maybe he gives him a demon heart. We go dragon heart with it. Love that. Yeah. Uh, Dennis Quaid can show up. He'll be the he'll be the surgeon. Um. Yeah, we know who you are. <laughs> Hello. Oh, Harrison Ford's here. Good, good. Yeah, finally. We were just talking yeah. about casting you. Um, yeah. <laughs> so then, let's see. He probably has dinner with the Dawn. You know what I mean? Dinner with dinner with the Dawn? The Dawn, D-O-N, the, the gang leader. Oh, the Dawn. I, I, I went immediately crime family instead of gang. Dawn. It's the dawn. Demon appendectomy. Yeah, a, a yeah. demon appendix. Why not? <laughs> well, um, I mean, I've, a demon appendix probably does something. Ours doesn't do anything. Not really. It's, you know, vestigial. <laughs> Damn straight. Damn straight. Um, um, so, there's yeah, no swearing so, on my Christian chat box. He speaks for one of us only. Yeah. <laughs> You, you can you can swear in the chat, and it's it's the man above is who I speak for. That is a duck icon. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there's no vertical alignment on Streamyard, so unfortunately, oh. it's not you. Yeah. Um, oh, true. Anyway, so he has dinner with the the crime leader. Yeah, and that's when we get some information that he is he has a gang of plucky misfits, and we kind of pull it back to show that they're not all bad people, I guess. I guess. I mean, you know, maybe the, well, all, the, all the demons, the gang, the gangsters. It's like, yeah. yeah, you know, I have my gang of misfit orphans who were abandoned by society, man. Yeah, man. Uh, and what you're doing is a service to them when they get their arms cut off doing crimes for me. And the doctor just goes, this is absurd. Send me home. <laughs> and he goes, no, we've tricked everybody into thinking you're dead. Maybe, sure. Yeah, yeah. Why not? It's like now yeah. you got nowhere to go back to. It's been like no. three weeks now, and you've been marked dead or deceased or something. He goes, "What? How?" And it's like, "Well, we, you know, got a demon shapeshifter to pretend to be your corpse, and then we got you legally declared dead. So your practice is shut down. So you're kind of working for us now." Yeah, he's not. He's not very cool with that. But um, then All he's like, twisted. also, yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> He's not he's not cool with that, but then the uh, crime boss leader's like, oh, also because you'll be working with us like forever, we got you like your own suite, so you have like a room with room service. So he's taken to a nicer accommodation, like you know. Um, where are we setting this? Like location wise? Yeah, probably Cincinnati. Cool. I was just in Cincinnati a few months ago. It's it's not bad. It's far more lush than I remember it being. As far oh, as yeah. like trees go, yeah, it's real green. So it's in Cincinnati. Cincinnati. So they give him 
they give him like a nice a nice suite overlooking the river. Mm-hmm. Um, that he can't. He tries to like climb out the window or something, and as he repels down, there's like, are we doing are we doing magic with this? Are we doing yeah, are these magic gangsters? Yeah, so he weird. tries to, he tries to repel down off his balcony, and he lands on the balcony below him, and it's his balcony because there's like a recursive magic spell on it or something. Uh, so he's had an escape attempt. Uh, the gangster's like number one follower or someone who, like, you know, his enforcer, his fixer, played by someone in chat names name an actor who plays tough people, men or women. Uh, we'll come back to their dream cast in just a second. Tough people. Who's a tough person? Like tough Mel people. Gibson. It's gonna be the name of our next podcast. Tough, tough people, people talk. Yeah, talking tough with people. tough people. <laughs> and it's not us. It's the people that no. we talk to are tough. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So wh- who's tough? While while we wait on chat to deliver a tough actor or actress, um, so the he they come by and they're like, you could try to escape. Jason yeah. Statham is it's, tough. You could try to escape, <laughs> mate. <laughs> Australian Statham. <laughs> Australian Statham, um, and kind of gives him a rundown because I think at this point the or this is the guard, this is like his personal attendant, someone appointed to keep all the Wahlbergs. Yeah, well, go, why I not mean, go? Definitely go off the burger, Wahlberg. Yeah, definitely the burger guy is real tough. Yeah, um, like, like Gristle. Which one is that, Donnie? No, the no the guy who's the chef. Bur- burger guy, Burger guy, Guy Fieri. No, I don't know. He's a Wahlberg. Got Fatty Wahlberg. I think it's Chet Wahlberg. He doesn't use Wahlberg because he doesn't want to ride on their coattails. Oh, it's a stage name. They're very famous. Yeah. Um. No. So the enforcers like gives him some backstory. Like, you, yeah, we're all, we're all. Uh, I can't do Statham, but I'm gonna keep trying. Go. We're all orphans and Mister Tibbs. I don't know. If- Jesus, I don't know where I'm going with that. I can't I do a character. I can't do a character voice. <laughs> no, he gives him he gives him backstory on the fact that um oh boy, we lost a viewer for that imitation. I apologize. Yeah, it was aw- it was awful. <laughs> it was dude. awful. Flat you figure that would just draw people to it like flies to a to a carcass. Um, yeah. gives him some backstory on what they're doing, and it's like, do they have a greater purpose, this gang, or are they literally just miscreants? Now nah, they're they're not a they're not a very successful gang. They're a pretty crappy gang. It's like you know, there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of magical turf in Cincinnati. <laughs> we're just trying to get our peace, pal. We're just trying to get our peace. Yeah. And he goes, "But why me?" And it's like, "Well, you're the best surgeon in Cincinnati." Yeah. Or you were because you're marked for you're marked as dead now, but yeah. you're still the best. It's just now you're legally dead. And he goes, "Yeah, and- thanks for reminding me." And the doctor's like, I'm not doing these surgeries for you anymore. And the demon's like, oh, yeah, well, then we're going to kidnap your kids. And they go, do it, or something like that. And then he finds somebody who's about to die, and he saves them. He goes, I'll only save you if I can put on all these arms and you save my kids for me. So then he gets somebody named Chaz, maybe. I have no idea. And <laughs> he's like, Chaz, you're going to die, but you need, you need a, I'll save you for, for one thing. That's that's not bad for an escape. Actually, he befriends one of the like uh, rookie gang members, yeah. and that rookie gang member comes in with life threatening injuries from something. They're fighting like those notorious Cincinnati werewolves. Um, band mm-hmm. name, by the way, Cincinnati Werewolves. That's pretty yeah. good. Um, and he's like, "Hey, listen, I know that Chaz, you're cool. They're going after my family now." So I'm going to give you a little bit more than you're supposed to get, but you need to go out there and save my family. And Chaz is like, yeah, man, I don't want to die. And, and, like, we're, good, and we're cool. I have a syringe of demon poison right here. <laughs> demon blood. Just poison. Either or. Wait, demon blood is poison to demons? Oh, it could be. Demon what? blood could be poisonous to humans. Oh, to humans. Oh, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, oh, I thought I thought the bad guy was like a mini demon, like a little punk oh, demon. It could just be like like nano demons. Oh yeah, no, okay, cool. know, we'll figure it out. So he turns that, and then he, he turns gets... Chaz into a superhuman somehow, yeah. and Chaz goes out and does it work? Does he save his family? Yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah, Chaz goes on a tear, but then ooh, it's called Demon Smack. Love that. Uh, it's like God <laughs> Smack, but maybe better. Probably not. Eh. Uh... <laughs> Six of one, half a dozen of the other. Oh. 
you're always bragging about your baking terms. I um, do anyway. Yeah. So Chaz goes into a raid. He goes into <laughs> like the the bad guy mansion. And yeah. He's he's high on demon bath salts, and he's like freaking out. And he like runs in there, and with all seven or twelve of his arms, he just bashes everyone like, and it's a yeah. whirlwind. Uh, and he goes, "Ha! Now I'm the big bad." And that's it. And that's the end. Oh, that's the end. Well, it's it's a short. It's setting up. It's setting up a universe here. Sure, but what happens to the doctor? Well, the doctor gets his kids back. Okay. Uh, he also opens his own private practice. Okay. And, and starts helping uh, other demons, just regular health issues. You know, just being a good doctor. <laughs> what if? What if? So he gets his practice. What if he proves that he's not legally dead? His family is alive. Yeah. He gets he gets away from the gang because Chaz is the leader, and he's like. You've been really helpful to us, but we don't need your help anymore. Yeah. Tr For I some can, reason. Trust me. I don't need a hand anymore. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh. um, and then, like, there's a knock on his practice door, and someone's standing there, and it's obvious they're, like, alter um, oppositely aligned to the demon gang. And they're like, hey, you won't be crafting hands anymore. You're in the arms of the angels now, or something like that. And, oh, then and, it cuts, like, and it cuts to black, and he becomes yeah. like a surgeon for the metaphysical gang members of Cincinnati, Ohio. Yes, and and I'm we gonna make an acronym out of that, but I can't. Uh, metaphysical gangs, MG, O M G O C, the M G O C, M G O C. No, we sounds, better than sounds that. Sounds awful. Better than that. That's yeah, awful. We, we, yeah, so we need like a. We need a better acronym than that. If it's going to be some yeah. crazy stuff without putting heat, like body parts on people. I, I like the idea that there's like a, a supernatural war going on in Cincinnati between a bunch of just de like supernatural creatures. Yeah, and this like mortal all doctor got caught up in it. That's fun. Yeah, there is there is an I've, uh, an angel based oh, rival yeah. gang as well, like a uh, uh, Puff Puff Pass five one three. I forgot what his name was already. Uh, <laughs> the um, Seventh but, Street Angels. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I was thinking that it'd be funny if they were like, they were like the, on the outskirts just watching this thing happen. Like they're like, look, we're not gonna mess with them. If they wanna, if the demons wanna tear apart the wolves, we're we're gonna stay out of this thing. All right, yeah. they are uh, historically, I guess the other term for angel was watcher, so that makes sense to me. They're yeah. just hanging out. They're just like, yeah, we don't take part. We just make sure it doesn't spread beyond the city. Yeah, <laughs> we just hope, we just have no Christians get hurt. We just we just keep it to Cincinnati. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's cool. Nobody um, would have suspected it. it's actually the heart of the country because Ohio looks like a heart. That's why I chose it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay, so Phantom Limb, which is now, do you want to quickly run through what this story is? Again, real fast so yeah. that I understand it. So we see a doctor. <clears throat> he's probably, I'd say he's probably a surgeon just because we're having him do a lot of stuff. Yeah, a lot of surgery very, stuff. Very skilled. We see him save someone's life after a car accident or doing an amputation or a transplant or something like that. Yeah. Cool. We see his family. We see his kids. They love him. He loves them. He's a good person. He gets abducted out of his car at like a stoplight by a gang of people or abducted at his office. He gets abducted by a gang of people wearing like scary masks. He gets taken to a cell. Somewhere that's weird. Somewhere that's dark and dank and eerie. Not in a good way. Um, is Angel Smack a band in this universe? Or yes. is that or is that a drug? If it's not a band, Ooh. we're going to use about, that as... That's another... Um, <laughs> that's another band. Uh, they're in a constant rivalry with Nightshade Table. Dude, what if, what if demons are snorting ground up like angel wing feathers? Yeah, I'm into it's, it. Yeah. Um... So he gets abducted, and he is kept in a cell for a long time. It's clear that he, you know something is so he's being captive, held captive by someone. Yeah. Sometime later, someone opens the door and lets him out, and he's like, "You have to perform an operation for us." No, he's like, "I don't do." All right, fine. Goes out. There's a dude with like a hand missing, or he needs something, and they're like. You're going to reattach his hand. And it's like, well, but do you have the actual hand? You're going to attach this instead. <laughs> Excuse me. Wait, is this Chaz who shows up later <laughs> on? Like one of the like the uh, bad guy? And he's like, remember me? You you saved me earlier. Oh, sh oh, sure. Yeah, he's the first one he operates on. Um, So he attaches this 
or they they present him with like an onyx or like an ebony box, and they open it up, and there's like a twitching demon hand in there, and it's obviously like not human. It's like I'm not gonna put this on this person. That's awful. It's like no, you're gonna do it, or we're gonna go after your family. A live video feed, and there's like a live video feed of his family having like sad missing dad dinner. Yeah. Um, <laughs> missing dad dinner is a band name as well. Anyway, yeah. Um, I'm gonna stop doing that from now on. Um, and they won't. No, I won't. I'll just write them all down, and then we can title our episodes whatever the band name is. Um, so he attaches the limb. Uh, it's weird. He's like, they're like, it doesn't technically break your hy Hippocratic Oath because it's not hurting them. And he goes, harm is more than just physical pain, but considering that you're threatening my family, I guess I'll do this weird, messed up uh, thing that you want me to do. He does. It goes great. Uh, Chaz sits up and he goes, oh, hey, I only have three fingers on this hand, but, and he like scratches a hole and he scratches like a line down the wall or something with the claws or something. Mm -hmm. He lifts the table up. It's cool. Um, <laughs> it's cool. Um, and doctor's put back into confinement. We need a name for the doctor. Hey, chat, what name are we naming this doctor character? Anyway, while while we wait on them to answer, uh, he gets sent back into storage. Storage, imprisonment, <laughs> demonic storage. Yeah, demonic storage, and um, he we see a little montage of him doing surgeries on people, replacing eyes with demon eyes, putting some horns in people's heads. It appears that there's a mix of cosmetic and replacement. Um, we see him. Get called in for a very important surgery because it's like the main enforcer dude or something. And he does it. And after that one, he's put back and then he's invited to dinner with the mob boss or the, the crime boss or something. Um, they have a little bit of a backstory where it's like, yeah, these are all orphan kids and you're making them able to survive in the mean streets of supernatural Cincinnati. And he goes, all right, this is kind of weird, but can I go now? And he goes, nope. But we'll give you a nicer room. Also, you're legally declared dead, and your family thinks you're dead, and your practice has been shut down. The life insurance paid out. So really, there's no reason to go back, because it's just all that's going to be reversed. Anyway, here's your new bedroom. Uh, so they take him up. Um, he's goes around. He kind of like tries, tries to make it his own. He tries to escape. We see that there's magic spells on it that keep him from escaping. And then he has to deal with the main enforcer. He doesn't have a deal with him. He meets Chaz. Uh, like Chaz comes up and is like, hey, you gave me this hand. It's great. I got promoted. People respect me now because I kill, uh, kill people really easily. And I do my job well. And I don't talk shit about my coworkers behind their backs. Steve. Um, <laughs> All right. Let's leave our personal life out of this. <laughs> that's I, I made I made that up for the stream. That's that's not real. Don't come after me. Okay, anyway, we both we work together and we both know. OK, whatever. <laughs> Don't don't des don't derail this before we get going. Anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, he does some more surgeries, and then there's kind of a blank spot, and then he has an escape attempt because um, Chaz comes in. He needs even more surgeries. He needs demon blood in, like pumped in because it's a it's like a revivant. It revives people. Why not? But it also makes you demonic. Cool. Yeah. Um, he says, you know, I'm gonna make you super powered if you help me get out of here. And Jazz is like, Hey, we're cool. Go ahead and do that. So he does. Um, big violent fight scene. Chaz helps him get out, and he goes back to his family. And we see Chaz is now like the the head honcho, and he's got a protection order on the doctor's house. But there's the implication that he might come looking for future work if he needs it. Because Chaz is not above calling in old favors. And then there's a knock on his door, and it's an angel. And he goes, hey, we heard you got into some business. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. It's fake bad, black. Bad smash, business. Smash to credits. Is bad business the name of this story? No. Okay. Bad yeah, business is pretty good. We're staying with Phantom Limb for right now. Okay. What does I it mean, mean, Zach? We've got 15 minutes. 
Okay, I think that it needs some names, uh, subtle character development, and that's pretty much it. Yeah. Um, so I think we need to fill in what he's kind of doing beyond just surgeries. Yeah. Like what uh, he does to either pass time or like does like, he go on like a ride along because they need him on the field for a raid and he sees exactly what they're doing up close and it's like this awful action scene. No, it's probably a bunch of like demonic training videos for, um, you know, like demonic surgeries and stuff and like orientation. Yeah, like sexual harassment things and blood borne <laughs> kind of Yeah, so he's going through um, just normal orientation, forced orientation for yeah, uh, you know, a demonic thing. Um, so yeah, so Doctor, uh, what, what, what's this guy's name? Doctor. Uh, uh, female or male? What do you think? Uh, Zach, give me a number between 1 and 15. 14. Okay, it's male. Okay, cool. Hank uh, Luschev. Luschev? What? Hank? Oh, Hank. Dr. Hank Luschev. Hank Luschev. Luschev. Luschev? Is it Luschev? Is it like Le the Chief. bad guy from the Bond yeah. movie? Yeah, Le with, with the, I, played by Maz Mickelson. A Mickelson, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so Dr. Hank Le, Le Chef. I don't like the last name, but that's fine. <laughs> I don't like it at all, actually. Uh, what, I, like okay, so, I, no, I like Hank. I'm cool with Hank. Um, Dr. Hank, I think we need three syllables. Um, a three-syllable last name. Half so, No. Uh, <laughs> Relation. Ch Chester Brook. Uh, Hank Chester Brook. Hank, Hank Wellington. Hank Wellington. All right, cool. Yeah, I love that. So Hank Wellington. His friends or, call him Beef. Yes. You can be the Duke Ellington of your Hank Wellington. He could be the Beef Wellington of the Duke. Well <laughs> Papadakis. Um, and then it's, so doc to quote uh never mind. Punchline's dead because I couldn't remember his name. That's okay. It probably wasn't Papadakis. <laughs> no, it was um, who was Ferris Bueller? Oh, oh, uh, <laughs> he killed a girl and then paid weird. off the people. Yeah, I, I completely <laughs> lost his name. Uh, oh my gosh, I can't believe that I don't know that guy's name right now. It's um, uh, oh my uh, god, uh, 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 Matthew Broderick. Matthew. Broderick. Matthew Broderick and Roland Emmerich's Godzilla. It's Papadopoulos. Oh, true. Okay. Yeah, nailed the joke. Good job. Uh <laughs> or Tatopoulos? So, I don't know. It's, um, it's, right. it's a funny Greek name. So, Dr. Hank Wellington and our bad guy, other than Chaz, what's, what's the bad guy's name? Like, the, the main bad who, like, forces him to do this. What's a cool yeah. like, demon? We need a demon name. The enforcer or the boss? The the boss. Matthew Broderick. <laughs> okay. No, no, okay. No, 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 no. Then the enforcer. <laughs> uh, I mean Solomon is like affiliated with demons. Solomon. Just one, just a one name, one name crime boss. Cool. You, you have to go talk if you want your freedom. You have to go talk to Solomon. And is Solomon the the main guy? Right, he's the main crime yeah. dude. All right, yeah, and then what, so. what's his enforcer person? Uh, probably something also biblical, like like Samuel or David or Daniel or uh, Herod. Easy Oki. <laughs> oh, Ezekiel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that Ezekiel. Easy Easy Oki is his band that, is his. Uh, that, yeah, his that's, name. Him, that's his streamyard DJ name. Oh uh, man, Easy Okay. I don't know. Is it easy? Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. So we have that. Uh, and then what, what is the name of the, of the big organization? The, the demon cult. Yeah. The seven, the fifth street demons. I don't know. No. What are street street names in Cincinnati? <laughs> I'm looking it up. Fifth. <laughs> fifth street demons. <laughs> no, uh, oh, I'm going to read. I'm going to read some of these in sequence. Okay. First Avenue. 28th Avenue, 2nd Avenue, 3rd Avenue, 4th Avenue. No, um, let's see. Ackerman Avenue, Addington Place, uh, Aldermont Court. 
Adding Addington Street Demons. No, I think that's too long. I need, it needs to be one one or two syllables. Yeah. Uh, Center Street, Clark Street, Corbin Street. I wonder if there's like a Crowley Street. Is that too obvious? Uh, yeah, because there's one of those like everywhere. Yeah. Uh, Davis you? Davis Street Demons for some alliteration. All right, cool. Davis Street Demons. The John's Three Sixteenth Street Demons. Ew. <laughs> 316 John Street Demons. <laughs> we meet at 316 every day as like a mockery of the you know the biblical verse everybody knows. Yeah, don't ever bring a John here. Um, okay, so we got the bad guy. We have their group. We have what they're doing. Uh, the main guy's name is Solomon. Uh, the uh, John 35th dash I don't think Street. that's an actual Bible verse. John 357. Uh, John 7, 35, it says, The Jews said to one another, Where does this man intend to go that we cannot find him? Will he go where our people live, scattered among the Greeks, and teach the Greeks? Okay, is so is, is Hank Wellington Jewish? Why not? Because if he is, then that, then that works perfectly. That's pretty so good. John, John 7, 35th Street. <laughs> Gang. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the, the J, J, J3, J735? Apartment J seven three five. That's his. That's his suite. Yeah. So J seven three five. So many heavy themes and and. That's okay. We don't really get into a lot of biblical stuff, so uh, no, we it, don't. It's fine to do that. Okay, so Doctor Hank Wellington is someone that gets captured after doing a uh, surgery. Well, he's actually captured beforehand because he's doing this yeah. first surgery, yeah. and it is a demonic uh, reattachment of, of sorts, I guess. Uh, it sure uh, is. Yeah, an arm, a Jewish doctor, obviously. That's fine. I'm sorry, I forgot to reset. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, yes, Doctor Hank Wellington. Jewish his mother is very proud. She is very proud, and she should be. Um, so he goes through all this. And yeah, I, th I think this is cool. And then yeah. Chaz is also the one who comes back, and then uh, yeah. blah, blah blah. And then we could we could leave it on a stinger where Chaz is the one who's taking over now as the new big bad because there's a power vacuum in the demonic yeah. realm of and uh, the angels. Angels show up and are like, "I hear you're the cause for the recent instability," mm -hmm. or and maybe Chaz not like, angels. F yeah, recent. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Harrison, you're never getting it back. <laughs> I'm going to take it forever. I'm keeping it. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, uh, let, let, let's study up on uh, John yeah. 735 um, because I, I like I like this uh, Jewish not-so-great doctor turning into a, a hero of sorts. And uh, thanks to Chaz for coming to save the day. And or at least, if not a hero, at least someone who is responsible for a lot of stuff happening. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Um and yeah, that's it, right? That's it. I think that's, that's a, all we got. That's a weird story. <laughs> that's a fun one. Yeah, that's cool. All right. Well, we're gonna uh, I'm gonna shelf this guy for right now. Yeah. And uh, like always, you can watch us on Talking of Stream on Sundays at 4:30 Eastern, 2:30 Mountain Time, because we live in Colorado, so we go by Mountain Time. You can always go to somenobodies.com and check out all of our stuff. If you want to help us and help finance movies or weird stuff that we're trying to do, you can always go to patreoncom backslash somenobodies and help us out. So people that do help us out, that we would like to give a quick shout out to is Scott Curtis uh, from Behind the Bits uh, uh, podcast. It is an award-winning podcast. He is an award-winning interviewer. He's an awesome guy all around. Very, very funny guy. Yeah, if you very want funny. to be, if you want to be interviewed by an, uh, a professional interviewer, uh, hit up Scott Curtis from Behind the Bits. Also, our great, great friend Sarah Tukachik and Tanya Sheck and Listener App. If you're into podcasts, go to Listener App. Uh, if you want to find them quickly, you can go to Instagram at the Greatest Podcast App and check them out. And if you want to read what I'm saying instead of hear what I'm saying, because Dylan doesn't like my voice as much, Listener App's where that's at. Uh, what, 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 what else? Uh, I think that's it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, we got we got stuff in the pipes. We always have stuff in the pipes. Yeah, and obviously, uh, get get special guest of the show, uh, Puff Puff Pass Five One Three, uh, official sum nobody. Obviously, was beforehand, but is now. No. Thank you so much for hanging out in the chat. We appreciate no. it. And uh, obviously, Harrison, we love you. You know that. Obviously, yeah. Uh, you know, we'll see you soon. Yeah, check us Ideally. out anywhere. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, I, that's all I got. Right, is that good? Yeah. Yeah. Bye. 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 Later.